right guys, today I have the Rattan Pinus. I think that's how you say that name, I could be wrong. If you guys don't know who these guys are, they've been making e-bikes for around 10 years. They first started making non-electric bikes, and then when the electric revolution hit, switched from non-electric to electric. So they've been around for a while, and they have five different models. This is one of their fat tire foldables. And as you can see, this is a dual battery e-bike with a range of well over 100 miles, which I'll get into more later in the review. Now the Pinus comes in two different colors, and I got three different options. The first option is just the single battery, which costs $1,700. The second option is the dual battery, the one that I have, that costs just less than $2,200. And then they have a third option with a single battery, and then it has this fat tire cart you can pull behind, which looks pretty cool. They actually have a ton of accessories. I mean, you got bags, baskets, racks. These guys have a page and a half of accessories start off, I want to talk about the design. This is a step-through design, so very easy to mount and dismount. Look at that. Yeah. Fire. You got T-shaped handlebars. It's got a quick release, so you can lower them and raise them up. This is a foldable bike, and this is the lever to fold the handlebars down. I like the paint job of the frame. It just looks very pretty. Welding is smooth around the head tube. There's this hole right there, which looks kind of cool. I see you. You can tell they welded these on for a front basket. And then down here where it folds, a lot of welding scars. You got BMX style rims. You got a rack that's attached to the frame and has a carrying capacity of around 60 pounds. Fenders are pretty cheap filling. That's your typical cheap plastic fender. The pedals fold in. And then here's the lever that breaks the bike in half. So just undo that and that just folds together. You know, there's really nothing too special or fancy about the frame. This is just your typical standard foldable fat bike. So let's talk about some other stuff. And the first stuff I wanna talk about is the power. This has got a 750 watt motor that peaks at 1200 watts and gives you 80 newton meters of torque, which means off the line, it's actually pretty good. Zero to 20 in how many seconds? Let's just find that out. There's 8, 11, 13, 16, 18, 20. Yeah, that's pretty fast. So now let's see how fast it can go. And to do that, I gotta put it to the highest assist level. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just gonna use the throttle because this is a torque sensor bike, which means in order to access all the power, you gotta like, you gotta put some effort into it. And I just wanna find out how fast the bike can go just on its own. I don't wanna do anything. I'm a lazy guy and I'm okay with that. You got some power. Nice, that's 29 miles an hour. Yeah. All right, guys, well, oh, dramatic slide, the camera. If you don't want to go that fast, in the advanced settings, if you hold down the plus and the minus for a couple seconds, you can change that. And I like these guys' advanced settings because everything is spelled out, there's no guesswork. So if I go to speed limits, I can change that from 31 miles per hour, which you can't go that fast, by the way, down to 13 miles per hour. And the last thing I wanna show you as far as power is how well it can climb hills. I'm at the hill, that's a 20% grade, about a half a block long. Just gonna use the throttle, here we go. Starts to climb right away. Oh, and it's doing good so far. Still climbing in speed at 10 miles an hour, and this is the steepest part. Coming over the top, there we go, wow. That's the type of hill climbing power you wanna see for a $2,000 bike. The next thing I want to talk about is what I feel is the most prominent feature about the Pinus, and that is the dual batteries. They both take four to five hours to recharge. You can shut them off individually, and they say that you can get up to 150 miles, but that's going to depend on the riding mode. Going back into the advanced settings, if you go to mode, you got three bars. Right now it's set to sport, there's normal and eco. Are you gonna get 150 miles on sport mode? I doubt it. I think to get 150 miles, you would need to lower that to eco mode and then set the pedal assist level down to two or three. But with five pedal assist levels and three riding modes, you actually have 15 riding experiences. I'll call them that. The next thing I wanna talk about is comfort. And the first is the posture. It gives you a very upright, comfortable posture, especially since you can raise the handlebars up lower or raise the saddle. It has a rider size rating of 5.3 to 6.4, and I'm a 5.11 guy. If I wanted a more upright posture, I could raise up the handlebars. There we go. That's feeling pretty good. Got the saddle raised up to where there's just a slight bend in my knee, which is what I like, and you can raise that up even higher. Handlebars are about as high as they go. You don't want to bring them anymore or else they're going to fall off, and that would be not a good thing to happen. The grips feel nice. They're stitched leather, wing-tipped. They screw onto the handlebars so they don't move. And if they do, you can just tighten them down. You got hydraulic front fork suspension that you can lock out and adjust. 
and when fully open, you got 180 millimeters of travel, which is pretty cushy. That's the type of suspension that I like to see for the price of the bike. Now there's nothing in the rear as far as suspension, except for underneath the saddle, which I don't know if it really does anything, but you do have a large saddle and it is pretty cushy. I wanna talk more about the frame and that's something that I don't typically talk about when it comes to comfort, but Rattan has actually made this two times thicker than most e-bike frames. And the reason for that is to absorb some of those smaller vibrations. This feeling yeah. vibrations. Or I guess not fill them. Now, as I was checking out this bike on Rattan's website, it looked like they were gearing this more towards off-road riding. And I can see that, especially when I look at the tires. You got some very knobby Kenda 20 by four inch all-terrain tires. So as far as traction and grip on the trail, you'll have plenty. But everything else, as far as off-road riding, it's not the best. You gotta be pretty choosy on the type of trail you take this on. Well, the last few things you guys need to know about the Rattan Pinus is it has hydraulic brakes. Right side controls the rear, left side the front. And when you hit either lever, the tail light lights up. On the control panel, you have these two arrows, and those are your turn signals, and it lights up on the screen nice and bright, but there is no sound. However, there is a bright light in the rear. Turn it off, you gotta hit it again. That's a color LCD screen, which I think looks pretty nice. And I wanna go into advanced settings for just one more second. I wanna show you everything you can change in here. First one is the wheel size. Speed limit, I've already talked about. You can change the brightness of the screen. There's the ride modes, voltage, do a factory reset. So you can set how long you want the bike to be on before it shuts off automatically. You can change the units, add a password. And then here in the advanced settings, you can change how many pedal assist levels you want. The next one, it says slow start. And you have four different options here, one through four. However, I was playing around with those and I couldn't tell a difference in takeoff power. Next one I wanna talk about is the cruise feature. So you can turn that on and off and that's pretty much it. All right, back up to the control panel. If you hold down the plus button, that turns on the headlight and the screen does dim down quite a bit, but it turns on a pretty big headlight. And then the tail light turns on and I think that's pretty much it. Well, I think the most appealing feature about this bike for me has got to be the dual batteries. The potential of 150 miles, I take that. And then a short recharge time of just five hours, that's not bad. Now, if you want to pick it up, I've got a discount code that will save you a few bucks. Now, if you want to check out other bikes that I reviewed from this company, I've got one up on the screen, so go check that out. And as always, I appreciate you guys hopping on here and I'll see you on the next one. I still see.